I am going to go over and share with you how I recommend you go through and check the weather for your race. Now, right now, at this time of this recording, it's November 3rd. I'm in Florida. 2020 is looking like it's going to happen. And what I do is a little recon. Uh, I have a few athletes that are doing the race. Not some one-on-one -on -one coaching necessarily, but a few athletes have done training plans, whatever. And this is what I'm going to recommend for them to be looking at leading into the race. Uh, so there's a few different factors, especially if you're looking into a race, if you want to do Florida in 2021, um, to do some little investigating on your own to find out what kind of weather to expect because it plays a factor in how you do your race, um, how you plan your race, how the gear you're going to bring, all kinds of different factors kind of go into it because uh, Florida is a little bit of a wild card. Could be a little chilly, could be a little hot. Um, other venues, I mean, you still have the same like, you know, Chattanooga, it could be 100 one year and be 70 degrees the next year. So you always got to kind of check, you know, the historical information and then just uh, do the best you can with your planning. And as you're getting closer to the race, paying attention to what the weather forecast is looking like and plan accordingly. So I want to share with you on my computer screen kind of what I would recommend that you go through uh, to, to, to make sure uh, you're ready for the weather and what to expect. And for this one, I'm going to specifically be talking about Ironman Florida. Um, and right now, this is, like I said, this is the year 2020, so we're kind of looking at this year's race. Um, last year was a little bit cooler than usual, uh, but we'll go kind of go over that. But this is a quick little way that I recommend for people to go through, and when I review a course or whatever and lay out the information for athletes or whatever, this is what I do in order to make sure I'm giving them the most accurate way to find out what the weather and what to expect. So let's flip the camera around. So... I'll share with you the websites that I hit. So the first one here is let me get the camera all adjusted. Weather.com and time and date are my friends. So first, usually I hit the website. You know, notice they've been putting information in, kind of like what to expect as far as event goes. Average air temperature of 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I will say. Um, when I did it in 2017, it was a little bit warmer than that. 2018 was in the Haines City, so it's a little bit hard to compare that year. Uh, but notice the average water temperature, usually it is wetsuit legal. So temperatures by then are cool enough in Florida that you should get a wetsuit legal swim. So be ready for that for sure. So the first place I hit is, like I said, timeanddate.com. Gives you good historical information. It's kind of easy to go around and poke around. Uh, and find historical information as far as the location. So I just typed in Panama City Beach. Uh, I went to November 2019. The race was on Saturday, November 2nd. So if you looked at the historical information for that for that day, 2019, November 2nd, that Saturday the race, it was a little chilly in the morning. It was 53 degrees. I mean, that's a little cold. So make sure you're ready. You know, do you need warm clothing in the morning? You know, when you're walking around, if it's wetsuit legal, you just throw your wetsuit on, you're nice and warm and toasty, and it's not a problem. But it is a little chilly in the morning. So, I mean, by the time, usually the race starts around 7 o'clock, so it's about 50 degrees. Um, so you head out there, and maybe you get it done, you know, if we look at two hours from 7 o'clock. So you're about 9 o'clock. So it's about 56 degrees coming out of the water. So <clears throat> that's going to be a little chilly coming out on the bike. So make sure you have the right gear, um, you know, when you see these pictures. Uh, some of these guys may not have the right kind of gear uh, to get through the, the first part of the bike ride and stay kind of warm. So maybe think about disposable arm warmers, um, you know, something that you could toss in an aid station um, and you're not really going to be sad. Maybe take some tube socks and cut the ends out and make temporary arm warmers, something you can get rid of. Because as you went along, you can see, you know, it got up to 70 degrees. So on the bike, that's going to be pretty warm. And when you start to run, I mean, that's that's pretty comfortable being on the run. So. Um, just be prepared that when you first get on the bike, you're going to be a little chilly. So this is 2019. So the high was like 70 degrees. Uh, humidity, 63. Like in the morning, it was the highest. But you get in the afternoon, I mean, 52 degrees by 8, 51, 53 degree percent humidity. I mean, that's that's pretty comfortable. So <clears throat> this is the information I get. This is 2019. I looked up 2018, the race day, uh, November 3rd. Now, remember this. 2018 was in Haines City because of the hurricane, so keep that in mind. But if it was in Panama City Beach, you know, you'd be looking at about 50 degrees, start race, and then you go through and you look at, you know, high as 70 degrees again. So 2018 would have been a little bit cool as well. So, 
you know, make sure that you're looking at historical information. So you're looking, I got 2019, 2018, I did 2017. So that's when I did race it. And actually it was a little bit warmer. I mean, it was still wetsuit legal, but swim time is about 60 degrees, very comfortable. Um, by the time you got on the run, you know, it's, it's 82 for the high. So that's, that's pretty warm and 56% humidity. So just be ready for that. And I said, the, the key is timeanddate.com. I went through and I looked up two or three years just to kind of see, I would suggest three or four years. Um, so I did 2019, 2018, 2017, um, just to see kind of what, you know, if there's a drastic year or something like that. And then to be as accurate as possible, I just go to weather.com. I search up the weather. I look 10 days out and this is Saturday, November. Uh, let me make sure this is the third Saturday. So Saturday, November 7th, a high of 79 degrees. So that's looking a little bit warm. Uh, and then they're calling for isolated thunderstorms developing later in the day. So this is good information to have that you're going to want to try to get off the bike as soon as possible. If you know, if the, if the bike is a little bit slower for you, you don't want to be caught on the bike in a thunderstorm. Trust me. So this could be a good indicator of saying, Hey, it might be worth it to use a little bit of energy up front to beat out the storms and get off the bike. So just pay attention. You know, this, this, this could change. You know, this forecast for the day could change. It could fluctuate to 70 degrees. It could go up to 85 degrees. It could go no storms. It could go storms. So I would say you're pretty safe at this point in time, a couple days out. It's going to be warm. Or there's going to be a chance of rain. So make sure you're prepared for those two scenarios. Um, and, you know, it's going to be partly sunny. It is pretty sunny out there. So if you've been training in places like Kansas City, it's a little bit cooler and you don't get sunburned as easily. Bring sunscreen. You're going to get sunburned if you're out there because it doesn't look too cloudy, cloudy. But I, there is another hurricane coming, Hurricane Etta. So that's a convenient thing with uh, weather.com. But if you kind of look at the track of it, you know, Sunday, it's still down here and, and you know, you know, well south of Florida, well south of Miami, you know, Panama City Beach is up here. So it's looking like the hurricane's not gonna be a problem. So that's the key. So I looked at the event, kind of saw the general, you know, what do they usually call for at that time of year? And then I look on timeanddate.com to look at past historical information. And then I look at the forecast when I'm a couple days out. You know, I looked at the 10 day forecast, good old weather.com. And then you can just see, so Saturday the 7th, isolated thunderstorm chance, 30%, winds 16 miles an hour. So that's not too bad. I mean, you can go back to timeanddate.com and kind of see uh, visibility, humidity, wind, six miles per hour, nine, 10. So it didn't look too bad in 19. 18, didn't look bad at all as far as wind goes. Uh, 2017, you know, got to 10 miles an hour, no wind. So... Just be ready for that. And it did look too breezy, but there are years it's been 40 degrees and 40 mile per hour gusts. So just make sure you're paying attention to the weather. Make sure you're paying attention to weather that's kind of out there that could be affecting, you know, your area or whatever. It still is hurricane season. So hopefully with that, that gives you a good idea of where I go to get historical weather information. So I'm ready for my race. Um, because the last thing you want to do is go in there and then two or three days before the race, if you're there at your location, you realize, oh man, it's going to be cold or oh man, it's going to be cold and rainy or it's going to be windy on the bike or, you know, you have all these different scenarios that you can plan for. The last thing you want to be is with two, 3,000 other athletes scrambling around locally to find uh, either a bike shop with gear or sports gear or a sports shop or anything like that. You know, Dick Sporting Goods, Academy Sports. You don't want to be competing with 3,000 other people looking for the same stuff. So if it's going to be cold, you know, get arm warmers. If it's going to rain, get rain gear for the bike. Um, if it's going to be hot, you know, you need gear like sunscreen. If it's going to be cool in the morning and then it's going to warm up later, maybe you get the stuff that's disposable that you can drop off at aid stations, like, you know, a tube sock for your arms to wear on the bike beginning so you stay a little bit warm. So that, in a nutshell, is kind of what I recommend. Timeanddate.com, look up a few past years, look at the Ironman website, look at the, you know, the historical information they put up on there, and then look at weather.com or some other weather app that you use to see AccuWeather, whatever, to see what the weather is going to be like leading up to your race. So you make sure you have all your gear you need before you take off and go to the event location. So 
that is it in a nutshell. If you got any questions, put them in the comments. Happy training out there, everybody. Good luck in Ironman, Florida.